This is one of the things about vinyl siding, bugs. They get all underneath here everywhere. They're just piles of them. They look like ladybugs, but I don't actually think they're ladybugs. I think they're another type of bug. Take this vinyl siding off. As y'all can see, what I did when we took the fireplace out from the inside, there's a door framed up behind this that I framed from the inside. I ran screws out right here and here. That lets me know where the inside corners of that door frame is up there. And there's going to be two screws at the bottom so I know exactly where to cut from the outside out here. down to the bottom now. Okay, we're down to the bottom here and there's our two screws I was telling you about at the bottom here. We'll be hooking our chalk line up in a minute. Popping chalk lines.
see up in there. Ah, oh, you can't. Okay. okay. In case y'all are wondering why we're putting the door here, there's going to be a heater pipe that's going to come out right here. This same exact system right here, just got the clean out on it, is going to be going right here. And in order for us to be able to get in here to be able to do the clean out on the heater, we needed a door here so that we could get in the inside the chimney to clean our chimneys out with the, uh, with the brush that you saw us running through there. So that's the reason for putting the door on the back side of our chimney. Okay guys, what you're fixing to see here now is we're fixing to do what's called a dry fit because we want to make sure that the door fits the hole before we do anything else. Okay guys, this is why you do a dry fit. You want to make sure that the door actually fits the hole. There might be some alternations that you have to make, uh, which we did have to do. We had, a, we had a quarter of an inch we had to take out. So that's part of uh, installing the door. Don't just go and just stick it in there without checking. Always make sure you check that before you do the actual final installation. Now we gotta go back and I gotta tack the plywood around the edges because after we cut it out, I had no way to do that from the inside. So we're gonna do all that from the outside and then we'll get back with you. What we're doing here now is I'm making a bit of a line where all my caulking needs to go. Because underneath the door, it's got hollow spots and all that. And I wanna make sure I get a good seal underneath the bottom of the door. So I'm making me a line, supposed to be about three inches in, and that's what we got right there. That's where your caulking needs to go under the door. We're using an elastomeric caulking. And I'm gonna fill in these corners here real good. I like a good heavy bead of caulking under a door. Kind of helps seal it up, keep some of the air draft out. Even though this is in a fireplace, I still I still like to make sure it's sealed pretty good on kind of insects and stuff like that crawling in. I'm a fanatic about sealing something off. I already know I'm gonna get to ask the question, how come I'm not putting silicone around the outside of my door casing when I put it in? But this right here is sunk in on it. So if I put caulking around this door on the outside and set it against it, it's of no it's of no use to me because it's it's sunk in a quarter of an inch right there. And I'm going to it's not gonna do any good. Once we install the door, what we'll do is come in from the back side and use spray foam and, and fill in the gap with a can of spray foam. Okay, y'all, what we want to do now 
is I want to take the level and I always I don't put it against the door casing because the door casing could be off I usually put it against the hinges we want to make sure that our door is right and looking at it it shows that it is actually it's perfect I mean I couldn't ask for a better fit you want to always work with the hinge side of a door first. We're using 16 penny galvanized nails, finished nails, to actually nail the door casing with. You don't ever want to drive your finish nails down all the way when you first start with a door. You want to leave them sticking out just a little bit till you get a, all of them drove up, just in case you have to make a change. Go back, check it, we're still good. One of the things you want to make sure after you get that done is make sure that you have a good reveal all the way around the door. And it looks like we've got a good reveal all the way around it. I like to put just a couple of nails in and then I like to check it. To make sure that it's going to open and shut okay. Looks like we got a good fit, no problem. These little things come inside the door handle here, so I like to keep that in there until I get it nailed in. That one's it's okay, I guess. Okay, in the door come a pack of screws which are fastened to the door. Two of them are for this top hinge. You want to always put some screws in your top hinge. It's not necessary in the bottom one because the weight of the door is pushing in on it. We've got shims, but luckily when I built the door jam, I built it. I just got lucky on this one. It's, it's exactly, exactly perfect. I don't have to have a shim in it anywhere because the jam fits the door. The rough end door opening perfect. Uh, so I'm not going to need the shims, even though I have them. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and put these hinge, screws in the hinge. Now you want to be sure when you're putting these screws in that you don't pull the door too far because actually you can um, you can pull the door where it's too tight. And we don't want to do that because our door is actually fitting real good where it's at. So we're going to try to just get these in here and just snug them. And these are these are three inch screws. Uh, the screws that's in the door right now, these are about three quarters of an inch long. To, one, between one inch and three quarter. What we want is we want to go through this jam and into the stud that's behind it back there. Before I put the second one in, I always go back and check to make sure we're still closing good. Check it one more time. Still got a good real good fit. There was two more screws that came with it. Therefore the striker plate that goes on this side, they're three inch screws. They'll go through that and go into the stud that's in the side here in order to hold the striker plate in. We'll get to that in just a minute. Okay y'all, we're gonna go ahead and put the doorknob in. 
Oh, that's a good fit. Company did a good job for a change. It's one of these things here you don't want to overdo. You just want to make sure they're snug because if you over tighten them, you have problems down the road. Good flush fit. You don't want it sticking out. Make sure it's flush. We'll take our doorknob, put the key part on the outside. Line it up. That part in there. All right. This is one part here you do not want to use a drill motor on. You want to make sure of exactly where your, your holes are at. Because if you use a drill motor right here, you can easily strip these out. Sometimes this can be a little bit tricky getting these started. That's why I keep a regular screwdriver for this part. You're less apt to strip it with a regular screwdriver. Don't ever tighten one of them down until you get both of them run up a little bit. Freedom of doorknob, you want it to move freely. Gradually tighten it. Okay. Now we want to come back, we want to mark our striker plate. Okay, we're going to bring our door to, and I turn the knob, we're going to bring it in. You can see inside there when you look the latches out. I want to take my pencil. I want to mark the bottom and the top of my plunger. That way I know exactly where my striker is going. And occasionally You'll have an issue right here with the striker that we'll have to deal with in just a minute. And I'll show you how I deal with it. You have to have it be a hammer, but and it may not be the most ethical way, but it's how I do it. Now I'm gonna temporarily put these short ones in. We've got two long ones to go in there. But I'm gonna put these short ones in just temporary. to make sure that the door opens and shuts like it's supposed to. Okay, we're gonna shut it to see how our temporary striker screws work out here. Okay, actually it works perfect. The door, you wanna push it in and make sure that the second part of the striker actually locks. Cause the striker plate, the, the plunger has a two part system to it. There's a two part system to this. This is the first part that goes in, but there's actually another plunger rod behind it. I like for my striker plate to come on past and lock behind that part. A lot of times if it just stops behind this one, your door has a rattle to it, but if you fix it where it goes all the way behind that one, it really keeps a lot of the rattle out of the door. So I'm gonna check it. The door went all the way in, good and flush. The gasket's completely compressed on the second striker, which is good. So we're gonna leave it at that. We're gonna take it out and put the long screws in now. Okay, what we run into is the trim ended up being a little bit further in, and the striker plate is actually kind of bowed out here just a little bit. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the hammer and kind of lightly tap the striker plate. It doesn't hurt the striker plate. It gives me a good, flu a good smooth system now. Just slightly bending it just a little bit. Okay, guys, because this is an outswing door, they put three screws in the bottom of this plate here to help hold this thresh down here. And I don't like to just stick the screws in there. I usually take a, I want to take a little bit of caulking and put in these because I like to make sure they're, they're sealed good. Put a little of this elastomeric in them so that when I run them in there, they uh they don't get any water in around them you can see how the silicone squishes up around them there kind of gives it a watertight seal when you do that They also send these in the kit with the door. Well, these goes on each side of your door. Because anytime you close a door, if you look at your own door at your house, these things actually, they fit in here, they're a wedge. They fit in there like that. They slide in behind that. So that when you close the door, what happens is this creates an airtight seal right here at the bottom because that's a place for air to leak right here at the bottom. You get one to go on each side of the door. But we're not going to put them on there. I don't usually do it. I'm going to caulk all this first. And then I paint everything. And after I paint it, then I'll put these in there. I want to go ahead and make sure we get a good bead of caulking around this right here. Because I like to make sure this is all sealed real well. And we're going to come back and go all the way up through that too. We'll get both sides of the door. Because the caulking needs to have plenty of time to dry before you actually do any kind of painting or anything. You don't want to over squeeze your caulking. You want to make sure that you get it just right. Make sure you get a good smooth finish. All this is going to paint, so we're not going to worry about it too much, but we're going to go ahead and Try to get some of our caulking in here. Get my gun where it works. Caulking is a secret to the life of anything about keeping water out. I'm not worried about that floor in there because that's just no cement floor. It's just going to stay that way. We'll probably paint it at some point. But we're going to continue going around the whole door, caulking everything, trying to get a good watertight seal on it. All right, because this is such a, a high wall and there's nothing here to protect this from water getting on top of the door, I've custom built a piece of flashing to go on top of this door here because I want to have something to shed the water off of the door and not get on the top of it and I've made it just a touch longer than the door is on each side so that yeah then I also run a bead of caulking behind this on the top of the door just in case so we're going to nail this up here and um, I'm all about going the extra mile to make sure that there's no problems So I want to make sure, and I'll probably come back and bend this edge down right here a little bit to kind of make sure that we get everything just like it needs to be. Alright, this gives us our little water lip edge here to run across here. 
shed the water off of our door casing here so we don't have to worry about water getting in behind it here. All right, guys, what I'm doing here is because this ledge hangs out over the, this so far, it's, it's, when you step on it, it's, it's aluminum. It's going to end up bending over the years. We already had the piece of metal back behind it here to keep the water from getting you know, back into the framing part of it. I decided to take a piece of pressure treated wood here and see if I can get it up under here. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to caulk all this around here so that we can maybe stop the water. And I've got it cut to exactly the width of this. We're going to screw it to it so that that gives us something to step on here so we don't, uh, you know, that we don't bend our foothold piece there. Okay, what we're doing now is putting screws in this. And the reason we're putting screws is we've got sheetrock on the other side. And if we go to hammering on this, it's going to knock our mud loose where our nails and is that in there. So we decided to screw it instead of hammering on it. Plus, if we ever need to take it down, we can just unscrew the screws and take it down. Okay, guys, we put the cement board above the wafer board because this area right here is where our flue pipe is going to be coming through with our thimble. And just for safety purposes, I would rather have cement board next to it. And what you're going to see happening there is I'm a precautionist. I take every precaution when it comes to something. Even I will come in here with this another layer of cement board around these studs so that um, there's never any contact with wood anywhere through the thimble. It'll always be cement board all the way around this hole. And we're not going to put this in right here until we actually cut the sheetrock out on the other side because I've got it fixed where this goes all the way past the sheetrock on the other side also. That way, there's, a, there's nothing but cement board in contact with the heat at all times. Okay. There it is. y'all because the heater has a blower on the back side of it here we're going to be installing a plug i want to kind of keep it up high where it's not on the floor and uh, be easy for us to plug right here and unplug so we've marked our hole for our we're going to be using what's called an old work box in this i'm trying to get the hole cut now in the sheetrock some people call these a pop-in box but they're a they're an electrical box that's used for 
doing um, remodeling is basically what they're for. So I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be fixing this in here. I'll show you in just a minute. I'm gonna bring the box inside in here. I'm cutting some of the insulation back so I can where I can get the box through and find it from the other side. Because I always like to put a little insulation back behind the box on count of cold air blowing through. This is what's called an old work box. That's why you don't have to, if you don't have an exact location, you can stick this thing in the wall anywhere and that's what we did. We went ahead and sheetrocked the wall and this was inside the wall behind it. And what happens is, is when you turn this screw here, these little wings flip up on the top and on the bottom here on both ends and that locks it in place so that you can um, put your plug in in it without shoving it in the wall. And it automatically does it for you when you make sure there's nothing in the way behind it it'll automatically do it for you when you start turning the screws these are great boxes for remodeling you just don't want to over tighten them you'll feel it whenever the little wing gets against the sheetrock right, right there right there now the plug is in there nice and secure all right we want to do a test on it now that we've got it put in and make sure that it works we've got that there and all right so we've got a blower blowing we've got good air coming out up here at the top of the heater this is what we're after so Looks like all that's going to work out real good.